splendors of the Cape of Good Hope, mountains that majestically rise above two stormy oceans, their slopes draped with the splendid floral kingdom, prompted Sir Francis Drake to declare this the fairest cape in the whole circumference of the earth. Botanists confirm that the Cape is indeed a very special place. The tiny region has one of our planet's six plant kingdoms all to itself. It has nearly as many species as does the vast Amazon basin. But whereas the Amazon is homogenous, one square kilometer being essentially the same as the next, the Cape is remarkably heterogeneous. One square kilometer can be entirely different from the next. In this landscape, grasses with long stalks that enable moisture to run down to shallow roots are not far from protea shrubs with large, waxy leaves and deep roots for collecting water well below the surface. Ericas with very fine leaves and shallow roots are not far from plants that store resources in large bulbs below the surface. How can the Cape accommodate such enormous diversity of vegetation that includes tall forests and short succulents. To answer this question, we have to keep in mind that the Cape is at the southern extreme of a vast peninsula, rich in plants and animals, surrounded by two strikingly different oceans, each a world unto itself. This peninsula is part of Africa, the cradle of humankind, an exceptional continent on an exceptional planet, Earth, the only one known to be habitable. Earth is much smaller than, and far less spectacular than, some of its close neighbours. Saturn is adorned with splendid rings, Jupiter with many moons, but it is nonetheless the only planet in the vast universe known to be blessed with an astonishing diversity of flora and fauna. The Cape of Good Hope, at the southern tip of Africa, a unique window into this exceptional planet, is a microcosm of the world at large. Seen from afar, the Earth is an inconspicuous faint blue dot covered with chaotically swirling white clouds. To discern order, we can use instruments that detect chlorophyll, the chemical that makes plants green. Photographs of such instruments reveal a variety of climatic zones. Deserts, jungles, savannas, prairies, tundra, all connected by the winds that harvest water from the oceans and store it in fantastically shaped granaries, clouds, that bring rain in different amounts to different zones. The winds, the clouds and the rain are phenomena of the atmosphere, the very thin veil of gases that covers the planet. That veil serves us in numerous capacities, as a shield that protects us from harmful ultraviolet rays and sunlight, as a parasol that keeps us cool, and as a greenhouse blanket that keeps us warm. The versatility of Earth's atmosphere is one of the key reasons for its habitability. When we explore the atmosphere, by climbing a mountain or by rising in a hot air balloon, we find the temperatures fall with increasing height. This is why the peak of a mountain can be snow-covered, even when its base is warm. Should a wind blow towards a mountain, the air is obliged to rise so that it cools, causing the moisture in the air to condense into the water droplets of a cloud. That is why the windward side of a mountain usually has more rain than the lee side which is usually arid. The top of Table Mountain is reminiscent of a Scottish moor, frequently foggy and windy, with many species of erica. At its base are entirely different plants that range from forests to succulents. Not only those of the fairest cape, but practically all mountains are associated with a diversity of climatic zones find out why the Cape is special, we next have to turn to its unique winds. 
The swirling clouds around our planet are not entirely chaotic. They tend to drift from west to east in high latitudes, in the opposite direction in low latitudes. The boundary between the westerly and easterly winds that carry the clouds is in the neighborhood of 35 degrees latitude, and it oscillates seasonally. Hence the winds at Cape Town at 35 degrees south are not uniformly from one direction. This translates into a greater diversity of climatic zones around the mountains. Other regions with similar climatic zones can be found in California, Chile, Western Australia and the Mediterranean, all in the same band of latitudes near 35 degrees south and north, all with wet winters and dry summers. Practically all are adjacent to cold oceans covered with fog or low-level stratus clouds. The fairest cape, however, is the exception. Cape Town is the only city that can offer its visitors a choice between warm and cold beaches. The cold Atlantic and adjacent warm Indian Ocean are two different worlds, each with its own distinctive marine life. A remarkable feature of the oceans, evident in photographs of chlorophyll, is the variety of marine climatic zones, the equivalent of deserts and jungles in the oceans. Cold waters off the western coast of southern Africa amount to a jungle in terms of the large quantity of fish and extensive kelp forests. The number of different species there is relatively low, especially in comparison with the warm waters of the eastern coast, which have a different climate that supports a greater diversity of marine life. The different oceans, because of their different surface temperatures, each has its own influence on the local climate. The cold ocean contributes to an arid coastal zone all along the southwestern coast of Africa, which it provides with moisture in the form of fog and mist. Along the eastern coast of Africa, where the Agulhas current transports warm water southward from the equator, the adjacent land is verdurous. Where the warm and the cold waters meet, the climate is unusual. Whereas Africa south of the Sahara has wet summers and dry winters, the fairest cape at the southern tip of the continent has the opposite, dry summers and wet winters. The special plants of that tip have evolved to depend on the fires that the dry summers permit. Some have cones that shed seeds only when temperatures are high. The mountains, the seasonally changing winds, and the warm and cold ocean currents are the reasons why the southern tip of Africa is the fairest cape. To check this hypothesis, we need to travel back in time, some five million years, when the water temperatures off the coasts of southern Africa were as warm in the western as they are on the eastern side. We can easily make this journey by traveling an hour to the north of Cape Town, to Langaban, there we find a fossil park that is a window into the very different world of five million years ago, when entirely different plants and animals inhabited the region, when the climate was different because it rained throughout the year. The fossil park is a reminder that continual change is the salient feature of our planet, the main reason why it is habitable. Ours is a continually changing planet. The rich, varied landscape of today, the spectacular mountains, vast, fertile prairies, lush tropical jungles and barren deserts. These are but a snapshot of a constantly changing panorama. Langaban is a snapshot of another era entirely. The agents of change include the drifting continents. At one time, the continents converged to form a supercontinent, Pangaea, with Africa at its center. These violent continental collisions, some 500 million years ago, produced the twisted, folded mountains that are the Hottentots Holland Range. Pangaea persisted for a very long time before it started to break up around 250 million years ago. 
in due course, South America separated from Africa, as did India, who drifted northward to marry Asia, a rocky union that produced the Himalayas. In the meanwhile, the Atlantic expanded, the Pacific contracted, the Andes rose and the Drakensberg fell. These gradual changes, punctuated by sudden violent earthquakes and the sporadic eruption of volcanoes, altered the composition of the atmosphere and caused global cooling. At the time of the sudden demise of the dinosaurs, 65 million years ago, there were no glaciers anywhere. Palm trees and crocodiles flourished in high latitudes. Then a cooling trend started, towards a more temperate climate that favoured the evolution of grasslands, mammals and much else. Today the savannah of Africa is one of the few regions where the large beasts still roam freely. Shortly after the Langerbahn snapshot, both poles had ice caps and cold surface waters started to cover large parts of the tropical oceans, around the Galapagos Islands and off Western Africa. By that time, the configuration of continents were essentially what they are today, and the stage was set for further dramatic developments. While the continents are drifting slowly, our planet, with the regularity of a metronome, spins about its tilted axis once a day and orbits the sun once a year, giving us the cycles of night and day and of summer and winter. We are all familiar with those rhythms, but few know that our planet has additional ones with much slower beats. For example, Earth's axis rocks back and forth with a period of 41,000 years, so that the tilt gently oscillates between 22 and 24 degrees. The associated variations in sunlight induce climate cycles, not unlike the seasonal cycle, but with periods of tens of thousands of years. The interplay between the climate changes induced by the regular, predictable variations in sunlight and the jerky, irregular drifting of continents is complex and entered a new phase around three million years ago when the cycle started growing in amplitude, culminating in ice ages that were associated with huge fluctuations in temperature and in sea level. Our species, Homo sapiens, emerged in Africa during this turmoil. We developed very slowly at first, but then, in the blink of an eye, geologically speaking, we made spectacular advances, from the invention of farming to the electronic miracles of today. We progressed by taking advantage of the favourable climatic conditions of the past few millennia, one of the brief respites from the recurrent prolonged ice ages. The present is a special moment in the long and eventful history of planet Earth. Our advances over the past century have been so impressive and have made us so powerful that we are now geologic agents, capable of interfering with the processes that make this a habitable planet. We are changing the composition of the atmosphere and we are starting to induce global warming. We who have become stewards of a special planet at a special moment in its history have the responsibility to understand and protect its wonders, which Cape Town displays so splendidly. Now more than ever we must remember that we call ourselves Homo sapiens, the thinking human.